Measuring the drapes is a well-known activity. You do it when you want to move in somewhere. Of course, we've been here for a while. I've been sitting in this room for 56 weeks now. And we're not going anywhere, but it's good to change things up. We've been changing up the format of these videos a little, and we'll probably change up the drapes soon too. I'm wondering, what would you like to see more of here in the future? Guest hosts? Location shooting? Performances? Listening exercises and other interactive activities? Tours through the Make Noise shop? Fun patches? Don't worry, we'll always do those. If there are things you'd particularly love to see, let us know in the comments below because I always like to keep the ideas flowing. And although we're talking about the future here, I have been reminiscing on the past a little and seeing where it takes my thoughts. For example, one time, maybe a decade ago, we were babysitting a friend's child, probably four or five years old, and I thought it'd be fun to bring out my synthesizer. I set up a patch, pointed out a few knobs to twist to sort of play it on the fly, and we hung out for a while, twisting knobs, pulling cables, patching cables, having fun. The kid loved it. They were dancing like they were having the time of their life, just getting down. After a while, we wound it up and they said to me, I'll never forget this. They said, that was fun. Can it make music too? It got me thinking about what music means to people. Some will say it's music if you can dance to it. Some will go further and say it's not music if you can't dance to it. This kid probably never thought about it specifically, but they apparently didn't think that danceability was sufficient condition for something to be called music. Let's think about it some more while we check the results of the latest listening exercise. If you wrote a third story window opening onto Haywood Street in early June, you're wrong. That's Haywood Road. Very important distinction here in Asheville. We'll do another listening exercise later in the video, so stay tuned. And remember, joking aside, there are no wrong answers. What does it sound like might not necessarily mean the same thing as what is it? So as we discussed, some people do consider danceability to be a condition for music maybe even the condition for music. But I've also encountered plenty of heated opinions claiming that too much danceability can lead to something not being music. A famous example would be the Disco Demolition Night of 1979, where a crate of disco records was exploded on the field during a baseball game. Fans swarmed the field in enthusiasm, causing so much damage that the home team had to forfeit the game. The anti-disco sentiment of the late 70s had, depending on who you ask, implicit or explicit racist and homophobic connotations. But even if that ugly element were somehow removed, it still strikes me that people's personal definitions are often based on exclusion. Whether this means excluding a different culture or type of person from the possibility of music making, or just excluding sounds or forms with particular characteristics from being defined as music. This sounds sinister, but it's usually more a matter of unconscious assumptions than of malice. What would a synthesizer have to do to prove to that four-year-old child that it could make music? A three-minute pop song with a verse-chorus-verse structure and easily intelligible lyrics? That's another one that shows up frequently, exclusion based on commoditization or marketability. Music from this angle is something that can be completed, packaged, and sold. Depending on who you ask, this could be that three minute pop song, or a well-engineered dance floor friendly club track, or any number of things, often mutually exclusive from person to person. I think it's time to make a patch. Let's do a patch that absolutely anybody would listen to and say, that's music. A swarm of bees. The keys to this patch seem to be in the buzzy, repeating tones and the 
feedback from Strega's output back to the external input. The time control sets the rhythm for the whole patch, both via the interference amounts A key place to control it seems to be the amount of external feedback. Too large of a momentary time modulation removes the illusion for a moment. But we can of course also hit sounds that bees will not make. This patch is a variation on a patch I saw on the internet, discovered by Mark Reinheimer. Thanks Mark for letting us use the patch in the video. I've thought a little more about how to define music in a way that starts from being inclusive. Here's what I came up with. Two conditions for music, and if either of them is satisfied, then I will consider it to be music. Here we go. Number one. If anybody thinks it is music, then it is music. Number two, if anybody claims it is not music, then it is music. There can be no universal definition of something like music. It exists prior to any concept of it. I guess to me, if we're thinking of something in musical terms, then for all intents and purposes, it is music. Whether that's because somebody hears it as music or because somebody else finds a reason to insist that it's not, thinking of something in musical terms is always going to bring the music out. Okay, ready for this week's listening exercise? What do you hear? Put your answer in the comments. Thanks for watching, and happy patching.